Apparently the terms definitive and remastered, we're going to get very familiar with this those in this console team. generation. We're talking about DMC, the definitive edition. Time for the rebellion. We've loved this game before. We We've have. reviewed it on the show we before. We showered it with love, yes. and we are probably going to shower it with. I'm going to shower it with love once again. Holy crap! Holy does this crap. game play wonderfully I on could this not, machine? You know, I never have fun doing anything except working with you. Right. A little less with Marissa, but oh, okay. I'm playing this game, and I loaded it up, and I'm doing things that I never do in my normal life. I never pump my fist. Yes. But I'm playing this game, and I'm like, yeah, got and all of those guys. Devil May Cry, and you're just. <laughs> Destroying people and you got your heavy axe and you've got your sword and you're so elegant and dainty but you're also just dealing death everywhere and everyone must be laid low and uh, a little arrogant which is some of the things that uh, put people off on Are the you little me I am well yes but also the younger Dante I think was a little too brash for I a lot hated of people. him I remember yeah. seeing this at E3 and I remember thinking this is ruined where's the white hair yeah not in a million years <clears throat> I like Dante now, and he still says some very stupid things at times, and he does some stupid things at times, and I like Virgil a lot. Yeah, me too, and I like the dynamic, and I like that we get to see that history. I also like that the Virgil DLC is included with this definitive edition, obviously. So you get quite a bit of bang for the buck for this game. Go back to these levels, and this is a game that I finished at least three times yeah. in the previous version, yeah. and I'm gonna finish it again in the PS4 and Xbox One version, yeah. and I go back, and I just, these levels are like lemons that I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing all the value, all the juice right. out of these levels, and I just want to squeeze them. And I never feel that way when I play games. I just rush through them, and I'm done, and I move on. But this game, there's a weird, addictive hook well, that keeps luring me back the in. The combat is effortless and flawless, but you're also getting all kinds of information on screen telling you how great you are. Every step of the yeah. way, that's exactly right. How great you are, you did this right, you did that right, you're awesome, you're still awesome, and I, I guess I kinda <laughs> need that at this point in my life. You know, I, I think you're right though, the design is is impeccable. This game is not perfect. There's still lots of down moments here. Yes. From there are parts where the game kinda falls asleep. There are levels that feel like they needed more work or more time in the cooker. But they look they way better now though. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like I feel like this was a game that was asking a little too much of previous gen, you know? Especially because there were so many rich red sort of bloody hues throughout this thing. A lot of the texture detail, a lot of the sort of background detail kind of got muddied and lost. This, in terms of environments, in terms of animation and fluidity and... You'd and be hard-pressed to find a third-person action game that looks and plays better than this one. Yeah, I'm glad this series is back. I'm glad Ninja Theory is getting some extra credit now. They deserve yeah. it. Yeah. And if you haven't played it, you're right. Gotta if you haven't there. played it, you gotta get out there. You gotta buy this game. Even if you already own it, maybe buy another copy because I'm I'm if, loving it. If I'm you love it as much PS4. as Scott, go ahead and buy really another one. What this. are you giving it? I'm gonna give it a 10. I'm giving it a 9.5. 10.5. You can't do that. Okay. <laughs>